Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Brian Russell, and welcome to our ongoing series of tips and tricks. Today I'm going to show you some of the uh, uh, new features that you may or may not be aware of in ABO, and also review some of the um, some of the older features for those of you who may be new to the program. So if you look at the screen right now, I, this is going to be an interactive demo, and I've actually started the, uh, the main GeoView program. And in the first screen, it allows you to, to find a project, create a new project, or delete a project. And I'm just going to take one of my earlier projects, which is called Colony. Uh, I'll select that and double click on it. And that will start up the program, or start up the project, in the last mode that w was in when I, when I left that project. And the colony is fairly well known to any of you who've taken any of our classes or gone through our guide. It's a, it's a simple, um, shallow uh, gas sand, class 3 ABO gas sand in Alberta. Uh, we've got a single line and we've got um, a well that encountered the gas sand. So uh, I've done a fair bit of work here already. So if you um, look at the uh, project manager, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see um, I've got um, for my well project, I'm in the project data tab. For my well data, I've got density, gamma ray, P wave, P wave correlated, I've correlated it already, resistivity, uh, an S wave transform. I used Castagne's equation and the Vio Gassman equations to create that, and an SP log. And um, if I simply um, double click on that log, uh, I can actually see it, and you can see it been playing around with it. Actually, I've got a few tracks that are um, missing here, but I, you know, it's uh, basically as I left it before. So I can, you know, can move things around like the say, like the P wave and um, and so on. If I want to put the P wave next to the S wave, I can delete these tracks that somehow were um, I must have not quite uh, finished with in the last time I was I was working with the with the software and, and so on. Okay, so let's look at the seismic. Um, I've got a lot of seismic here. Uh, I've got some uh, pre-stack data. Uh, if I click on the super gather, here's a set of um, gathers uh, that basically have been, uh, they're, they're not the raw gathers. I actually have the raw gathers, but I, I did some uh, mixing and a little bit of noise attenuation on these gathers. And um, you can see I've colored them in the uh, with a with a red green type color scale, but of course I can always um, uh, turn that off. Uh, look at the um, uh, if I want to, I can I can say let's instead of looking at the color traces, let's just look at the uh, standard wiggle trace variable area plot. We can also open uh, view two. In view two, I'm going to put a I've, I've done a stack already. Um, in fact. If you look at the um, CD, at the post stack data, I've got a CDP stack here. That's a stack of these gathers. I'll move, I'll move it in. You can see I've picked two events. Um, if I want to uh, get rid of that event, th those events, so I'll look at the parameters here. I can go in and say, uh, look at the horizon selection. Let's say no horizons. Make it a little cleaner, so we can just see that um, that data set. Uh, stack data set. You can, see, you can see there's a beautiful um, ABO anomaly or a beautiful bright spot. I mean, not necessarily an ABO anomaly, although we can see it is an ABO anomaly on the gathers. Um, if you look at the gathers on the um, left-hand side, but it's a, it's a very nice bright spot. And obviously what I'd like to do is see if I can uh, determine some uh, ABO attributes from this. Now, if we go to the process list, um, actually I've already done an, eight, uh, an intercept gradient stack, but let's let's do it again just to uh, see what it uh, see what it entails. I'm going to select the ABO analysis button. Uh, notice there's a whole series of uh, ABO analysis options, and I'm going to use the ABO attribute volume, and I'm going to select the input, which is the super gather. Um, I've already set up a velocity field. I've already um, done a lot of pre-processing. So I'll just click on OK. And it says they already exist, but that's fine. We'll, so now we can, we'll get the uh, ABO 
uh, gather replace it, or sorry the uh, ABO um, analysis replacing that that stack again we can uh, go ahead and uh, under view um, two I well, I can just um, look at this and I can uh, go in and look at the seismic view parameters I can turn off the um, horizons again no horizon just to make it a little cleaner by the way this is our standard default plot as you probably know it's intercept times gradient I can go in and uh, change the color data volume to look at something like uh, scale plus one's ratio change if I want in which case you can see there's a drop in um, plus one's ratio as we get into the gas sand and an increase as we head out but I'm going to stay with the and there, obviously there's many other different color data volumes but I'm going to stay with our standard intercept times gradient because it's color data volume uh, it's, oh, I picked the intercept times sine of gradient so product A times B and it's a it's that's a very clean uh, little little display now let's turn off view one so I can see the complete um, gather here and what I'm going to show you um, again this is these are things that we've had for a fairly long time, although there is a fairly new feature that I'm going to show you called Create Section Zones. So notice I click on the View tab, Create Section Zones, and I get a little uh, menu at the bottom. And right now I can go to a pre-selected um, set of zones, although I don't have any. So I can set these zones to a new set and call it Set 1. And now I can select either the rectangular drawing option or the polygonal drawing option. Let's, uh, rectangles are always a little easier to deal with. So I'm just going to select this. Now, I should have pointed out this zone here that I'm about to select is the top of the gas sand from the well. I should have made that a little more specific, but you can see very, very strong amplitude anomaly there. Make sure it's the right color. And, uh, I'm going to make that red. And by the way, if I want to, I can I can zoom that up a little bit to get a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more control of what I'm what I'm selecting. Let's select another zone. So I'll, I'll again I'll just do the, use the rectangle. I'll select this product below here. Remember when we looked at the uh, pseudo plus ones ratio, this looked like the, the base of the gas sand. So I'm going to select that now. Now it's green. Let, I mean, let's change it to blue. Just uh, kind of like blue as my second color. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the cross plot control. Now the cross plot control can be very general or it can be very specific. So I'm going to say feature group only, which allows me to select ABO, A and B, RPRS, uh, Lambda mu rho, model based inversion, and so on. So let's um, let's select a uh, intercept and gradient. So the x attribute will be intercept, the y attribute will be gradient. And I'm going to launch the cross plot. And when I launch the cross, it said it already existed uh, from a prior time. So, so there's the cross plot. Nice. Uh, and, and as I suspected, those events, uh, if you look at uh, cross plot space, those events are the top in red. So you've got negative of a class 3 gas sand, negative intercept, negative gradient, and the base of a class 3 gas sand, negative, positive intercept, positive gradient. Now, if you're not familiar with these concepts, you may want to take our course or read uh, one of the many books on ABO to, to get a better feeling for what a class 3 anomaly is. Now, you can also, uh, of course, edit these interactively. So I can take this event here, and I can make it a little smaller. And by doing so, you'll see it updates uh, the points, move it over a little bit. So I'm actually editing, interactively seeing where those points would lie. I can do the same thing with the event at the top. There we go. There's a little more. And uh, so I'm, I'm actually shortening the box a little bit. I can actually make it a little thinner if I wanted. Now let's see if we can actually find a wet trend. Let's change it one more time. Just, I'm going to get a really nice, uh, yeah, there we go. That's a nice uh, look at that. Gas end. So let's look for a wet trend. I think below the gas end. So let's go back to our, our zones, pick a zone. And I'm going to pick this zone here. And I'll color it. 
There it is. Um, I'll color it green, a darker green, so we see the difference. And I'm going to move that. Uh, that's kind of interfering with my red zone. So let's move it up a little bit to this wet, what looks like a wet sand above. And now you're starting to see the classic uh, minus 45 degree wet trend, as you might expect. So let's let's just move that around a little bit until we get the classic. All right. Now that I've got this this data set. I can actually go ahead and you can see it's called ABO set one at the top. I can go and do what our traditional approach to picking zones was. So I'll I'll go and I'll pick a zone, make it a now I'll make it a um, elliptical zone. And let's say our first zone, I'll make it uh, this ellipse here. And uh, we're gonna it's gonna create a cross section. That little question it asked me, do you want to see a cross section? And yes, I want to see a cross section. That, I perhaps picked too much of, of that, so let's um, let's take it and make it a bit smaller here. Okay, there we go. Now I'm narrowing in on that that um, gap, the top of the gas sand. Now I'll go in and oops, let's go pick up another um, ellipse. I like to use ellipses here, and there's the base of the gas sand. And finally, we'll pick a third ellipse, and oh. Um, the wet trend, and you can see the wet trend is showing a lot of the, the where all the sand, the, sand, the wet sands and shales are. Now this has been our traditional approach, but we've extended this quite a bit. So let me let me get rid of these for a second. I'll show you another approach that will do a similar thing, but do it a little more accurately from a statistical point of view. And by the way, I can uh, at any point I can say um, view. Uh, redis reset display range, and that gives me a better look at those those anomalies. Now, let me show you another thing. If we go under options now, we've got a new set of options called clustering and classification. So let's pick that, and under the clustering option, I'm, I first have to say new clustering, and there's three options. There's general clustering, and let me show you the general clustering first of all. I'll, I'll say I want three clusters, and let's apply that, and let's see what happens. And look at that. It found those three clusters very um, uh, cleanly. By, uh, and the general clustering option, it also uh, applied a Bayesian fit to them. So now what we're seeing is Bayesian statistics applied to those clusters. Now in this case, that that's an automatic clustering option, which is useful if the clusters are quite separated. But if I delete, let me delete that, delete current, and turn off trace data volume, uh, color. I just want to take. I want to turn on the. Um, here we go. View, and I want to take the uh, turn the fill off. So we'll trace fill off. That's a, the button I was looking for. Okay, now what we're going to do now is a second um, option where I will create a new set of clusters, but now I'm going to say data defined clusters. And now it knows there are three zones because I've defined them on the data. Now this is useful if the clusters overlap because uh, the general clustering option will only work well if the clusters are reasonably non-overlapping. So let me apply this now and actually Actually, I don't have to apply it. It's already figured out the clusters. So I'll go to the classification now, and I'm going to apply that. And now we've um, we've now defined the the um, statistics from the data clusters themselves. And you can see I've got the the mean, uh, x mean, the y mean, the x variance, the y variance, and the covariance. So the x remember is the intercept, and the y is the is the gradient. So now what we've got, and let me show you this, is a is a really nice example of. In fact, let me um, zoom zoom that up a little bit. And uh, so now we're actually seeing the statistics of those zones. So now instead of just uh, if we if we remember my first zone picking, the, the the zones were one solid color. Now they're actually contoured. The, it goes from the darkest blue, where you're closest to the center of the bivariate ellipse, or the, the Gaussian ellipse, 
and it goes to white as it gets away. So we're actually seeing um, a statistical analysis of those um, ABO plots. So hopefully this very short overview has given you an idea of some of the new features and, of course, some of the old features that we've, uh, we've got in the software. And, um, uh, of course, I was doing it on a, on a very simple 2D line. Uh, you can just as easily work on a complete 3D volume, and you can, um, look, you can actually look at the actual zones themselves in 3D using some of our more advanced uh, 3D visualization features. But I think this is a, a, is a very um, comprehensive set of tools now for analyzing your, your AVO anomalies. Now, this is one particular tips and tricks in our ongoing series. And if you click the button on your screen, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can get in, info about uh, or information about future tips and tricks or past tips and tricks uh, videos. Thank you very much. Thank you.